Although we have talked about functions in previous lessons, we have not talked about how you can create your own functions. We are now doing complicated enough things that it would be useful to have reusable code in the form of functions. So let's drill down on that a little bit. Just to review, a function defines a particular block of code. We pass arguments into the function as uh, arguments inside the parentheses of the function. Um, usually the name of the function tells us something about what it does. And then the return value, if there is one, comes out of the function and we can do things with that return value if we want. So, so far we have seen how to use the built-in functions or functions that are parts of module. We're now going to take a look at functions that we have defined in our own code. So if we kind of take an internal view of what's going on in the function. The argument is the thing that we pass in. So if this function is named fn and we pass a 5 into it, that's what's going into the function. Inside the function, we have a sort of dummy variable, which we call the parameter, which represents whatever the thing is that we passed in. So we create a variable for that, and then we use that variable inside the code block that is in the function. We have a definition statement followed by a colon, and then the uh, code block is indented. Any variables that are defined inside the function, either as parameters or just defined uh, in the code, are local to that function. So what that means is that if I set the value of x inside this function, once I go outside of the function, Python does not know what the value of x is. If I define some variable as a part of my main script, let's say the variable z, then the function can access the value of that variable. It will know what z is. So I can use that variable inside the function. Then once I've done whatever sorts of calculations I want to do inside the function, I have a return statement. So I say return and then which uh, named object that I've worked with or created in the function that I want to return. And whatever that value is, is what comes out of the function as the return value. So just some details about defining a function. We use the def statement when we're defining them. It's followed by a colon and an indented code block. A function can have parameters or it can have no parameters if the data is just created inside the function and does not make use of information that's passed into it. And then I can return uh, one or more values, or I can also not have a return statement. Sometimes a function does something, like for example, save something in a file. There isn't anything to return out of the function in that situation. One of the things that is sort of a best practice is that it's generally safer to pass all the things into the function that guarantees that the variables that I'm using in the function are local variables. Sometimes you can accidentally mess around with a global variable and change its value when you don't intend to. So if you pass all the variables in, that basically guarantees that the changes that you make will stay only inside the function. And the only uh, outcome you'll have is whatever it is that you pass out of the function. So that's generally a better programming practice. Sometimes if you have a lot of global variables, then it's really annoying to have to pass in a list of a whole bunch of different things that you want to use in the function. So there are situations where using them as global variables uh, does make sense. So one thing that you need to distinguish between is the arguments that you're passing into the function when you're using it and the parameters where we define sort of the dummy variables that we're going to use inside the function itself. So in this example here, I have used the name first number for the parameter of the first thing that gets passed into the function. So I use it in the code right here. When I pass the argument in for that first item that's being passed in, I do not have to use the same name as what I called the parameter. I could pass it in directly as a literal, 
So if I pass in the number 3, then the value assigned to first number in the function will be 3. Or I could pass it in by referring to some other variable. So here I've set the value of 3 for the variable num1, and then that value will be passed into the function. Um, and num1 does not have the same name as first number, but that's fine because when I actually call the function, I don't have to use the same variable names that I used for the parameters when I defined the function.